Hey everybody, it's Rick Callen, Beautiful Vista Sports. Uh, today I'm with Sherry Kelch. How are you doing, Sherry? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fine. Good. Sherry, thanks for coming on. Um, really just a, a special opportunity that I'm, you and I have been talking about for actually a few weeks. And so I'm glad that we're able to pull our schedules together and make this yeah. happen. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're, you're welcome. Uh, just for everybody's knowledge, um, Sherry is the mother of one of our beautiful beasts of softball player, Cheyenne Kelch. Uh, I interviewed Cheyenne about a year ago. Cheyenne was also a guest coach on our select team, um, came down and coached that team for us over a tournament weekend. Uh, Cheyenne's also a commit to William Jewell College. So a lot of good things going on in Cheyenne's life. Um, Sherry's also mother of Cody, uh, attending Texas Tech and also Clay is going to Oklahoma Baptist, and she's been married to Alan for 20 plus years. Yes. Pretty good. Yes. And today we wanted to get together and talk about you, what's going on in, in your life, and you've got a message to share with us, and, and we'd certainly like to hear that. And if, if I could, I just want to just kind of see how you are doing and just kind of give us a little opening statement about what's going on in your life, Sherry. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate that. I'm, I'm doing good. Um, I'm really tired. So what, uh, so the reason we're having this and just so people know, um, I was recently diagnosed with um, kidney disease after a hospital stay due to uh, what we found out to be an ulcer in my stomach. I couldn't eat for about two weeks. And so we had a CAT scan done and uh, found out there was a huge ulcer in the bottom of uh, my esophagus top of stomach. And they uh, put me on medicine for that, but I was put in the hospital because my lab numbers, my blood work was just crazy, um, was very abnormal on some areas. And so after six, uh, I guess I was in the hospital six days and four days after being in the hospitals when they ran, uh, continued to run tests and after four days of testing, found out I had this kidney disease um, which also <laughs> ended up being that I am actually in stage four kidney failure right now. So that all happened on March 8th. Um, and as you can imagine, um, when they tell you, you have a kidney disease, that's not curable and we can't do anything for you. Uh, we just have to, to move forward with basically your kidneys are failing. Um, it was a very hard pill to swallow for me at that time. It was very hard. Um, I'm, I'm thinking, oh, it's just an ulcer. I'll take medicine. I'll be fine in eight weeks. No big deal, right? I mean, it's just, I had no idea while I was in the hospital, I was going to get diagnosed with this um, at 46 years old. But here we are. And um, now we're just moving through this new journey. My family and I are just doing the best we can to figure out everything. It's a very whole new world to us. Um, researching things daily, trying to educate ourselves on what we need to do next. Um, I am currently at 16% uh, functioning right now in my kidneys. So, um, and I have a very rapid, from what we understand, it's a very rapid disease. Um, and so it's progressing pretty rapidly at this point. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to talk about a little bit, you know, where those levels are to, to get onto the national registry. Can you talk a little bit about that and kind of where you're where you're sure. at at that, that level? Absolutely. So like I had said, I will, so let me back up a little bit. While I was in the hospital, I was a 20 uh, functioning at 20% kidney function. Um, by the time I got out of the hospital, I was at 17. Um, and two weeks ago, I was, um, it had dropped to 16%. So actually within two weeks time, it went from a 17 to a 16, um, which is where I'm at right now. And I'll have labs done next week to find out where it's at. Um, so when you get to a 10, what they call GFR, which is how well your kidneys are functioning. Um, when you get to a 10 or below is when they start putting you on the dialysis, on dialysis and um, which I definitely will do if I need to, to keep me alive. But we're trying to and hoping that I can get a preemptive transplant before that's before that happens. Um, and that that's that's the hope. Right. And that's what we're working for right now. So. Right. And you have a message, you know, what you would like people to know. Um, I, I'm a I'm a donor and have been all my adult life. Um, yes. 
can, can you talk a little bit about that and, and really where's the balance at with people that are signed up to be donors? Absolutely. And my biggest message, um, one, I have a couple of messages I'd like to say, um, but one of my biggest messages is that it is, I didn't realize when I started researching this and talking to my nephrologist and, and getting into this whole new world, I didn't realize how many people are not an organ donor. I mean, it really surprised me because, you know, we, when we go get our, our driver's license and they ask us at the, the DMV, would you like to be an organ donor? Obviously, to me, that's a no brainer, right? That's an automatic. Absolutely. If I am no longer here and cannot use my organs, I would love to give the gift of life to somebody um, that can use them. Um, and it's very shocking to me how many people are not. And so I would just encourage anybody and all of you who are asked that question to really take a step back and, and, and look at that and really dig deep in your heart and, and know what that's going to do for another individual and their family. It's not just, it's not just that individual, it's the entire family. This is can really affect you, right? I mean, people are losing lives because we don't have enough donors out there to be able to give an organ, you know, to someone that needs it. So I would encourage if you are not an organ donor, um, Please pray about that and really, uh, look, you know, really evaluate the reason why you are not one because it can really save a life. And and I'm there. I mean, I, you know, I've seen people get them before. I never thought at my age or at any age really that I would be on the other end of wanting, you know, needing one. Right. And it's very important. So I would really, really ask you to to pray about it. It truly is a message about being a gift of life, right? Absolutely. There's, there's just so much that we can do. You know, oh, yeah. what we try to do at Beautiful Beast is, is to is to help our kids find a good footing. But it is so important in life that as adults, we help others any chance we get. Especially, oh, absolutely. absolutely. Especially when that opportunity is, um, you know, given to us through, um, you know, an, an accident, we can give the gift of life through, you know, being a, an organ donor, right? Absolutely. I think it's very, very important. And I just think that, you know, if you don't know much about it and you want more information, there's, there's a lot of resources out there that can really help you to understand what you're doing. Um, again, if, if, you know, you're not able to use those organs anymore, um, you know, it, it's, there's people out there that can really benefit from it. So I, I would encourage everybody to look into that. Can you talk just a minute about the donor list and the, and the process that someone that was maybe alive and thought, you know, hey, I, I, I want to do something to help and I'm, I'm not wanting to wait for an accident, but sure. so what, what can they do and, you know, to, to get so, checked and screened? So what I'm, what I'm learning right now, and again, it's really new to me because I'm, I'm not to the point of getting tested at the transplant center just yet, but I feel like I, I probably will, I will be here in a few weeks. Um, what they had, what my doctors have told me is that it's not if you need a transplant, it's when. Um, I absolutely will need one. There, there, it, there is no stopping it. Um, and we are, um, it, it's looking like it's going to be within this year, if not sooner. Um, we're just not sure on the timing right now, but all of that's pretty new. But when you, we do get to the point. So when I go to the transplant center, they'll, they'll talk to us about all the information about how people can be a donor and all that. What I do know is, is that if you are, if you feel it in your heart and you feel like God is calling you to be an organ donor and you're a living donor and what they call a preemptive trans, having a preemptive transplant, and you want to help someone by giving you, by giving them the gift of life. Um, you work with a transplant coordinator, there's a link that you can, or you can go to your local transplant coordinator center or transplant center and, and work with a coordinator and you go through the testing and then they will put you in what's called a national kidney registry, your information. Okay. Um, and when your information is out there, you could possibly be matched up to anybody in the nation, right? So if you... Your, your information, when you go through all the testing, um, all of that, your blood work, all the testing that they do on you, um, it's called pair kidney, and you can be paired up with someone that needs a kidney, or it, I'm, I'm assuming other organs, right, but I'm dealing with the kidney side of it right now. Um, so I would, I would highly, if you feel like that is something that you have, a, that's, that God's calling you to do, um, I would encourage you to go to your local transplant center, talk to them about it, 
and let them know that you feel like God's calling you to be an organ donor, uh, a kidney donor. And, and, and start the process because you can do that on your own. You don't have to wait for someone that if you know somebody or you hear, you, you can go do that uh, proactively and, and try to save a life. That's a, that's a wonderful message. And, you know, you speak of, of God and, and being on your heart. Let's, let's talk about faith. You know, Absolutely. Uh, life can sometimes throw some things at you. And, <laughs> you know, we, we talked about that earlier yes. and, and talk to me a little bit, talk to us, all of us out here in, beautiful beast nation as to, you know as Rick, I, it's very very important i mean i i can't even imagine um you, you waking up every day and not having god as as the center of my life and everything that i do and i truly mean that um you know i i have i have a lot of people that ask me right now sherry how are you able to smile why are you so bubbly how can you be so happy you're so you're just so joyful even even with everything that's going on you don't even act like anything's wrong you know you know why because that's god in my heart and, and because i know ultimately that he's got this you yeah, know he right. he is in control of my life at any every single moment of the day I know that he's the ultimate healer of what's going to happen. He has it planned out. He had it planned out before I was born, right? So I, I can't, the human side of me, yes, I worry, you know, I'm like anybody else. I worry about it. That's normal. But I pray every day that God just takes my worries and he just takes it in his hands and he just comforts me and he gives me the joy and the peace that I need every single day to get through this because like I was telling you, Rick, I, you know, if, if you look at the larger picture of what's going on, it's very overwhelming and it's um, it can really take you on an emotional roller coaster and not just you, but your family. Um, and because there's a lot to it is every single day I'm learning something new, but I take it day by day and I just know who's in control and I know that I'm going to be OK, regardless, re regardless of what happens. God has a plan and it's going to be OK. And I'm, I'm, I truly, truly believe that in my heart. Well, I, I truly appreciate you, Sherry. You've really become good friends. You know, yeah. the, the whole Kelch family is, you know, near and dear to me. I really do love you guys. We love y'all too. Um, I really appreciate your time, you know, getting this message out. Please wrap it up for us. I'm going to toss thank, it over and let you wrap it up. Absolutely. And I love y'all too. And I appreciate you so much. You're just awesome. You and your family are just so sweet. Um, I would like to say, and so one thing I didn't mention a while ago is that um, I am, I wanted to mention my blood type in case there's anybody out there that feels like they have a calling or, or that maybe God has spoke to you through this message, or maybe you uh, are, are looking to possibly give the gift of life to someone else. Um, and, and you may not know that the, one of the requirements is uh, matching up, being compatible with the blood type, right? So I am a B negative. The negative and the positive does not matter when it comes to donating a, a kidney. They don't look at the positive or the negative. I can only receive a kidney from a B or an O blood type, Okay. a B or an O. And so I would encourage you if you are uh, to go find out what your blood type is, um, and research what you, who you can give. And like I said, there's more than just blood type that can match you with somebody. There's 10 different things. The more of the 10 you have, the better of a match you are to that person, right? But one of the, one of the deal killers that from the very beginning is your blood type. You have to make sure you're compatible to that. Um, so I just wanted to mention that. I meant to mention that uh, earlier, but I, I basically just, um, one of my other points I wanted to make other than being a donor is that, um, you know, I was very uh, strict about staying on top of my health, staying on top of my labs, making sure I get blood work done, making sure that, you know, I was, I guess you could say I was probably was a little paranoid um, because I just want, I was just kind of like, you know, if I can catch something early, you always hear that, right? Get something, yeah. get, test yourself, get blood, get your labs done, go to the doctor, make sure you have your annual reviews, your annual checkups, right? Because, mm -hmm. If, if you if you do that and people uh, doctors can diagnose you now, then maybe you can stop something early. Um, I did that. And my labs have four years ago were normal. In four years, I've gone from normal kidney function to 
stage four kidney failure in four years. So it's very aggressive. My point to that is, is that my labs were abnormal for four years. And I had two major surgeries in the last five years. So I had a lot of checkups to get labs, checkups on all my stuff to make sure I was okay. Um, and I didn't have well, not one doctor in the past four years mentioned to me that anything was abnormal when I asked them. So my message to you is, is that if you see something abnormal or you don't know what your labs mean, or you don't know if, you know, maybe they say, oh yeah, everything looks great. I would encourage you to get a second opinion to make sure that if, you know, educate yourself, understand your lab numbers, know what they mean. Know, because this can be, this could seriously mean your life. I mean, it can save your life, right? Like I'm in this position now because, you know, I had no idea. I didn't have a doctor tell me, oh, when I asked, are, are my labs good? Oh, sure. Absolutely. Everything's great. You look wonderful. And in reality, I'm not. And I hadn't been for four years. So I would just encourage you to stay on top of your health. I know it's scary. I know that people, you know, they, the unknown is scary that they're like, man, I'm too busy. I don't have time to take time for myself. I, I don't, I don't want to go to get labs because I don't want to know. I want to know, but I don't want to know. Y'all, it is very, very important to stay on top of that because you can catch it before it's too late. And thank, I thank God every single day. And I truly, truly know it was a God thing that he allowed me to have an ulcer in my stomach to find my condition now before it was too late. And that's my message is to stay on top of your health and, and just, you know, just be diligent and, and getting second opinions and, uh, and just take care of yourself. That's it. And just keep praying and God's got you every day. A wonderful message. Um, as always, it's, it's really great to catch up with you and you thank you for the time tonight. Yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks. Have a great, have a great you night, too. Sherry. Thank you.